on Tuesday, January 12, 2010, at 4.53 local time, in Haiti, 25 kilometers west of the capital, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck. It killed 230,000 people and it severely damaged much infrastructure. I'm going to discuss an article called Ionospheric Anomalies Associated with the Haiti Earthquake of 12 January 2010 observed by Demeter Satellite. And it's by Sakar and several others, you can see. It's published in the Natural Hazards and Earth System Sciences, and it was published in 2012. The article discusses ionospheric anomalies that occurred the day before. Figure 1 shows you where this earthquake occurred, and it shows you the aftershocks timeline that occurred afterward. Figure 2 shows the electron density 40 days before and 40 days after the Haiti earthquake, both at daytime and at nighttime the day before. The top figure represents the day and the bottom is the nighttime. On the X horizontal axis you see the timeline. Negative numbers represent time prior to the earthquake and positive numbers represent days after the earthquake and the zero represents the day of the earthquake. On the y-axis, on the horizontal axis, you see the electron density. The green in the middle of the graph is the mean. It's the average of all of the recordings. The red lines represent a 95% confidence interval. And that is created based on how variable the data is. And basically what it means is that if any point falls outside of that interval, it's an anomaly. It's an anomaly in the sense that it's just not very probable based on the overall pattern of the data. And you see in this figure that the day before the earthquake, both at day and night, there is an anomaly. It rises above this confidence interval. Next, I'm just going to show you that these are the two uh, equations that were used to calculate that confidence interval. In figure 3, it is set up the same way, and everything is the same in terms of the mean and the red confidence intervals and the day on top and the night on the bottom. The only difference here is that now we are measuring ISL electron temperature instead of the density. Now you see here, the day before the earthquake, there is an anomaly in the ISL electron temperature. Clear anomaly, it falls out of this confidence interval. There's also a slight deviation at the bottom right at night, and also a slight deviation during the day, shortly after that earthquake. Both of those drop lower, however, so that is a clear difference in terms of prediction. And these could have been associated with aftershocks. There are many things that can cause disturbances, but these are different types of disturbances. Figure 4 shows you the electron density distribution that occurred around the globe the day before the earthquake, January 11, 2010. And the star that you see, that red star, is where Haiti is. It's the location of the earthquake. And you can notice 
that basically most of these lines fall more on the left side of the spectrum. They are a little bit green and blue. And you can see to the left of that s star that there's a very green only area. You also do see a strange anomaly uh, all the way on the left. That line you see on the bottom is very red and the top is very blue as, it, as if there's only a small or a very acute disturbance. An acute anomaly like that can occur for a whole variety of reasons and it's not clear here what that reason was. Figure 5 is the same as figure 4 except it, this time it's at night the day before instead of the daytime the day before. And you see over the star over Haiti a very strong anomaly relative to the other markings around the world. Okay. You see it's very green and everything else is either a little bit green and blue or just blue and purple. So there's a clear difference in that region of the world. As a whole, it's clear that there were ionospheric anomalies that occurred the day before the 2010 January 12th Haiti earthquake.